Hello, today I'm new does how I got scammed when purchasing a soda machine to flip. I also go over a funny story while I was working through this process of this vending machine and what I learned so it won't happen to you or it won't happen to me again as well. If you've watched one of my recent videos about flipping vending machines, I've done it several times. I've made lots of money off of it pretty quickly as well, at least doubling if not tripling sometimes. And I was trying it again. I found a soda machine that was at a barber shop. They only wanted $500, which is a smoking deal. I knew I could flip it within a week, maybe two, for $1,000, if not $1,500. So I reached out to him, set up a time to go see it. It was 20 minutes away from me, which I don't want to be that far away if I'm keeping a machine for myself to maintain and refill. But since I was flipping it, I was like, all right, that's fine. I can ignore that. I could go out there for a week or two, show people it refill it if need be it's not that far away meet the lady super nice lady shows me the machine it is in a barber shop and she had just put a couple cans of soda in there and turned it on to show me that it was working because she said she hasn't maintained it or refilled it for a couple months supposedly she moved 40 minutes away didn't want to drive out there to refill it which I understand so just shut it off and is now trying to sell it the barber was doing someone's hair and I didn't want to distract them or be a nuisance to the property owner. So we went outside to finish our conversation. I confirmed that it got to stay on location. She said yes, gave her the 500 bucks, she gave me the keys, all good. I've done this several times before. You can see about them in my previous video. Basically the same situation. I meet the vending machine owner, go and see the vending machines, we trade money, that's it. Sometimes there might be a property manager or someone that we talk to and say, hey, this person's gonna take over, or when I sell it as well, this person's gonna take over maintaining the machine. That's it. There's not a big hoopla about switching ownership. And I think you want to do that so the property owner doesn't decide to change the contract agreement or think, oh, maybe we just get a different vending machine in here. Kind of keep it hush hush. At least that's the feeling I've gotten. It's worked out all except for this time. So you've already know I've been scammed on it. Now let's see how I was scammed. Right the next day, I text the barber because I got his number. And I was like, hey, I'm coming out this weekend to refill it. I wanted to get refilled before I listed it for sale so that way people could see it was working and maybe it could make me some money in the meantime. Didn't get back to me. The weekend comes around. I text him on Saturday. I'm like, hey, I'm coming out today. Got the soda for it. He texted me back and said, he, he texted me back and said, I thought I was getting moved. Just that, right? And I'm like, no, she told me it could stay there. And he said, no, I don't want it here anymore, right? And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is all over text. Hadn't met the guy yet, and I just couldn't believe it. I was like, all right, she got me. She got me good. And then since I was going to flip it, I was like, all right, I'll give you 20% of profits, which would be about $0.10 cents on every dollar. Profits on soda isn't huge. But I offered, because this location was originally supposed to be no profit share, which is nice because the profits aren't huge. But I offered it to him since I was going to flip it. Then I could let the new owner worry about you know, changing that agreement down the road if they wanted to. But he said, no, he just wants it moved. So I said, okay, I'll come get it later. You know, I, I told him I couldn't get it that day because I hadn't planned on getting it, and he was fine with that. So a couple weeks later, I load up the trailer on the truck, get the dolly. It's just for my brother-in-law. I don't have a appliance dolly or anything. It's like a Harbor Freight cheapo dolly. But this machine, as you can see in the picture, isn't even as tall as me, about as wide as me. So I thought it was going to be light. Right? This is a picture of it in my garage. And... I thought it was going to be light, but I get there and I didn't just want to leave the machine there or sell it to someone else to move because machines without locations aren't worth anything. Maybe I could have got 300 bucks for it. Maybe I could get 300 bucks even now with it in my garage away from the location. But anyways, I get there, meet the barber for the first time. We're talking about like how she screwed me over. He's like, yeah, I text her. This is the barber saying this to us. I text her and she's like, I got my money and that's it. So that's all she was worried about. And I was like, yeah, she scammed us. But I took my dad who was kind of crippled, he's older, and I took him more for moral support because, like I said, I, it looked small to me. I thought I could do it. Get the dolly under there, go to lift it up. My dad's at the front of it. Here's the, here's the funny part, right? This is the funny part, the funny part of the story. My dad's at the front of it trying to lift it up so we can get it to the level of the dolly, right? So it's, the dolly's taking most of the weight and he can't lift it up. He's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm like, all right, <laughs> you come you come to the other side, hold the dolly, I'll lift it up to that level point, and then I'll come around, grab the handle from you, and pull it out. And 
He's like, all right. So he tries that. I go to lift it, and I can lift it up, get it to that level part, but he can't hold it. He's like, no, nope, but I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm like, all right. So we set it back down, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, what am I going to do? I did call someone earlier that day for help that had a little bit more muscle, but they were busy, and I was like, I got to get out of there. This is the only day I have for another week. I'll just go do it. And I thought it was going to be a lot easier. I had the trailer with the with the ramp and the dolly. I was like, this would be no problem. Anyway, so what what am I going to do now? I grab a strap, you know, like a ratchet strap, hook it up to the front of the dolly, all the way over the top. So now I'm hanging onto it over the top, the strap, with my arm underneath the dolly, leaning back and pulling. So I'm basically doing two jobs at once. And my dad does just enough to help me get it up to that level balance point. And once it was there, it was moving on the dolly pretty easily. The dolly was rolling out. Not, not, not a big issue there. It was just getting it to that balance point. So we get it outside. Once again, it's just me and my dad. The barber and his customer who showed up didn't offer to help once, which kind of sucked. But anyways, we're doing it. We have to go down a curb into the parking lot, just a normal curb. So I pivot the dolly, which I'm sure anybody that uses a dolly has done it before, and it pivots pretty easy. And then I go to push it down the curb and the dolly's not moving. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Like, I can't, it was rolling just fine, pivot, I can't move it at all. I'm like, what happened? So we look at it, and when I pivoted, it bent one of the tires. So now the tire is like pinched against, the metal rim of the tire is pinched against the axle, the metal axle, right? And so now I am just either pushing rubber, basically like dragging this machine down the curve. We get down, I had to push as hard as I could, Pivot again, now I'm dragging it across the parking lot, not rolling at all. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So get over to where I parked the trailer, set it down one more time. I was like, I was exhausted at this point already. And so I'm like, all right, I'd rather, I'd rather have to ratchet strap it, pull it back again, than try and do this all in one, one motion. So we sat down, we get a plan, we're like, all right, I'm gonna get as close to the trailer as I can, get a little bit of a running start, pull hard, and you're gonna push, I'm telling my dad this. So we got this plan, we go, as soon as my, as soon as those wheels that aren't rolling hit the lip of the, of the ramp, which isn't, wasn't a very big lip, but as soon as it hit it, I slipped out and I'm on the ramp holding it, I slip out, the vending machine fell on me, freaking fell on me, hurt my shoulder, still hurts, it's been about three weeks now. Thankfully the dolly had a handle that kind of went down underneath about a foot, so when it fell, it didn't completely crush me, which was nice. But my dad didn't realize I fell, so he he keeps trying to push it, and so I'm like getting hit in the face with this with this soda vending machine. I'm like, Dad, you gotta stop! I fell down. He's like, Oh, okay. And I'm sitting there thinking this all happened in like 30 seconds. One, I'm thinking like, Oh, those guys are probably laughing at me, right? Laughing at us. Two, I'm like, My dad's not gonna be able to help me get this off off of me, so I'm either gonna be stuck here until he goes get someone, which he can't even walk that fast, or I'm gonna have to lift up by myself and this was all thought process in like 30 seconds so I'm sitting there thankfully I'm on the ramp so it's about a 45 degree angle I'm sitting here so it wasn't completely flat down laying down but I just pressed it off me and I was able to get it up and I was like alright we can do this we're not gonna be able to use the ramp so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ramp off we'll push it right back up to the trailer and lay it down and push it on and then I can lift it up because now I knew I could lift it from basically flat right or that's what I thought anyways so we do that, we push it up to the trailer, we lay it down, but because the dolly had that handle that came down a foot, which saved saved me pretty much, because this thing's heavy, at least 600 pounds, if not more, I don't even know, it's crazy heavy. Doesn't look it, but it is. But because of that, the dolly's basically a single line like this at that point, and then the vending machine's on it like this, so as soon as we lay it down on the trailer, it falls over like that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And my dad's like, yep, thought that was going to happen. I'm like, dude, why, why didn't you say anything? He didn't mention anything until after. And he's like, yep, I knew it, which I'm sure you've all experienced with your dads. But so at this point, it's there. I'm like, okay, we got it kind of on the trailer. Let's pull the dolly off and we'll slide it back so it's more in the center. And then I'll lift it up because you don't want, at least we're told, you don't want refrigerator freezer things to be laying down. right? You don't want the refrigerant to go up the tubes. It's not supposed to, all that kind of stuff, I guess. So we lay, we lay it down, we try and push it. Well now, now this huge vending machine is flat against the trailer and you got all that friction, all that surface area for friction. And 
we can't really push it. So we had to go to the front of the front of the vending machine, put the dolly underneath it, crank it up just a little bit, kind of like a crowbar. So we got an air gap kind of, and then push it. And we got a little bit, we got it on there, good enough. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try and lift it. And I go there, and it's so, it's there's not even room to get my fingers underneath. I can't lift it. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. I realized then that the ramp really did help me out a lot. So I'm like, all right, we're just gonna leave it here. I had another appointment later that day at my ice machines, which is like an hour away from me that I had to be at. And so this was taking up time and I was like, all right, we're just going to leave it laying down. We'll drive it home. We'll unhook the trailer, try and unload it first. If we can't, we'll just unhook the trailer and go to the ice machine because I need to be there. If it breaks, it breaks 500 bucks, which sucks. But, and I got scammed on, but I got to be at the ice machines, right? So we get home. We're like, all right, now we should be able to just slide off real easy. There's already a spot in my garage, which you, which you could see in the picture, ready for it. So we go to push it. Once again, that surface area friction won't let it budge. So we try the dolly idea, and it does it again a little bit, but then the dolly's falling off the trailer because now it's at the end of the trailer. I'm like, what are we going to do to get this off? Like, I could wait till later today when I have more muscle to help me or... You know what are we gonna do? That could that could cause it to get ruined. It could be ruined already, but that the longer it lays flat, the more likely it could get ruined. So, I think they had some two by two boards. We were able to use the dolly to pry it up enough that I could stick two by two boards underneath each corner of it. So then the surface area touching the trailer wasn't as much, and we were able to push it off the trailer, stand it up, then you know kind of catwalk it into the garage. But it was a crazy, crazy story, crazy experience. I like I said that made me wish I would record more like all these people that set up three cameras or take their time to set up the cameras before they do something. I, I can't do that. I just want to get things done. But that story made me think really about doing that. So what did I learn from this whole experience? Well, when I tell people this story, their first thought is, oh, you should have met the property owner. But like I mentioned earlier, I don't think you actually want to meet the property owner because then they could realize, hey, we got a new person coming in. Let's change the contract, change the agreement, have them remove it, which is kind of what happened to me. But what I did realize is that this machine had been sitting there for a couple months without being used, without being refilled. So it's an eyesore right in the barber shop. I bet the barber got asked a question about like, hey, is this thing ever going to spit out my money or is it going to give me soda? Is it ever going to work again? So to the barber, the property owner, it probably be, became a nuisance just because it wasn't being used. So what I learned is do not buy a vending machine, even if it says it has a location, if you can tell that vending machine has not been used in several months because now it's on the property owner's radar. And with vending machines, you kinda wanna fly under the radar. Just they work, they take care of themselves, the property owner doesn't have to worry about it. I am not afraid of selling vending machines. I'm still gonna try and flip them. I'm gonna take this new knowledge and keep it. Hopefully you all learned something from the video as well and we'll keep that knowledge. I, It's right now in my garage. I'm still trying to find a location for it. Like I said, if I sold it now, I'd lose some money. I already have it here. I might as well try and find a location, which is really hard for me, but I'll try. And then that way I can at least make my money back, if not some. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the story. It was hilarious. I love telling people what happened and how it all went down. And hope you learned something from it. If you did, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and go check out some of my other videos. See ya.